Okay, no idea what I was saying, so I'll just start from here because, you know, I'm breaking the audio and then watching the video while I'm trying to talk about it and compress, download, upload, all that crazy stuff. Hey, we found a Pantheon finally, 30 faith, and we're there. Okay, move the warrior back, and we're almost dead with the scout, and we run into the barbs, so probably going to die there. Uh, we got Messenger of the Gods, which we want to get. And as you can see, I do play quite quicker uh, when I'm not talking while I'm playing. So, <laughs> I don't know. I kind of like this, and I kind of don't. And I'm gonna, I, I was torn whether or not to build a monument, but um, I just decided to. So. I'm so used to building monuments, even though, uh, like I say, um, you know, on these type of maps, I'm just... Uh, I'm... Um, it's not that I can't do it, I am just not as comfortable uh, with uh, what I want to do. So, especially when I, and the scout got killed, especially when I want to be close uh, to a couple of civilizations, hoping that, um, you know, I can build an army, one of them or both of them will declare war on me, and, um, and I can maneuver that way. Now, it doesn't always work out for me, I've had quite a few games recently where uh, I had a control of quite a large part, 60, 70, 75 percent of the map, and uh, <coughs> uh, well, I don't know if I would have won or not, it really looked bad, I think I was like 20, 21 percent behind, and um, matter of fact, I was playing against Pacal a few times, and I couldn't uh, cross the ocean, uh, the massive ocean in time, to nuke him or uh, I couldn't get my army because Ethiopia was in the way and I let them get too far ahead and um, you know it took me a while to get through all their uh, great uh, great war infantry and you know with their bonus uh, I was playing France uh, as well so um, I I know that you're supposed to be able to just dominate these maps with France so um, uh, their style, I have, uh, I haven't really, mm, I haven't gotten down uh, perfect yet for larger maps. So, although I know that it can be done and people can do it quite easily, um, I'm just not that advanced yet. So, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, it's, it's funny. France is in the game, and Pacal, I am Pacal this time. So. <laughs> uh, uh, they'll probably just run me over. Uh, <coughs> anyway, what else is going on in this game here? Uh, we are tr waiting. Yeah, just waiting. <laughs> I'm trying. I don't know what I'm trying to think. I know I'm researching the will. I'll have that in a turn. And we want to get the gold uh, for the embassy. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Give us 21. Okay, we'll take it. And and whenever we buy back the embassy, we lose four gold. But eh, I want the gold right now. I want to buy a, a settler as fast as possible. Um, uh, we're gonna have that marble up and be able to sell it. And we are, uh, um, I would say, a little bit behind. I'd like to be at five pop by uh, turn uh, fifty or sixty. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to happen. Uh, I think it's 20 turns till the next um, uh, population increase. So, but we are going to get a monument. <laughs> so we will maneuver up uh, three points in culture, and we have uh, have we completed the marble, or is it one more turn? One more turn, I think. Kathmandu needs a great engineer. And since we didn't build uh, any wonders, uh, I don't think we'll be uh, getting any of those anytime soon. Uh, until, of course, we get the uh, bonus uh, from Pacal and um, are able to <coughs> uh, generate uh, great people. So uh, that's after uh, getting into the medieval era, uh, get into the long count, and can't remember 100% for sure or not, but I think if you, it's either if you take a, um, uh, if
if you take out a capital, or is it if you destroy a civilization, uh, you reset the uh, long count? So I can't remember. I know I've done it before, but I'm not exactly sure how I did it. I, I know that you can reset the uh, long count. So like if you, you know, had uh, four or five great people already from that, and uh, there is a way to redo it, uh, you know, and you can just keep going. So um, I know there's an issue. I'm trying to figure out what I want to build here. I know there's an issue between whether or not you want to save your uh, great scientists, great uh, merchants, great artists, great um, uh, uh, engineers for late game or early game because if you take it in the early game, uh, if you are going to try to generate great people, then um, it takes longer to do that. So uh, one strategy is to save them for later uh, when those, uh, after you've already popped a couple of uh, great scientists or great engineers or whatever you're trying to pop, uh, and then um, in the later game, then you use them when, you know, it's like 700 or 900 um, points uh, to get a great person. What is going on here? <coughs> oh yeah, we're building a settler. <laughs> uh, so, um, maybe a mistake, maybe I should have waited for one more population, but I can't undo it now, that's that's where I went. I just figure uh, four pop, for some reason I remember, um, four pop, I don't know if you can still get away with this or not, but I know like, if you build coliseums in all your cities and you are at four pop in all your cities uh, and don't grow any further that you can hold your happiness you know not great happiness but you can you can have it um, in the positive instead of the negative and keep trying to you know build more and more cities more and more uh, army and destroy <laughs> so uh, that's um, probably what I'm thinking of doing uh, very uh, <coughs> uh, Japan-esque uh, whenever you play against Japan it seems like they you know put a lot of cities all over the place and keep them uh, low population cities uh, so and um, and yeah, don't take my uh, word for everything I'm saying I'm not uh, you know that great of an expert or even close to an expert so it's just kind of stuff that I learned from watching other people hearing things reading stuff playing the game over the years and and uh, you know as the updates come things change whether or not you can uh, achieve the things that you used to be able to achieve so <laughs> so and then when you play different uh, civilization games you uh, or at least I tend to uh, jumble some of the uh, strategies and things that you can do. Uh, so, but yeah, way different than revolutionary uh, strategies. Much easier, uh, of course. If you've played that game, you know, uh, um, much easier to uh, just keep putting cities down and destroy. <laughs> but it's just pretty much the same concept in this game. Uh, just a little bit more uh, advanced. No uh, shooting the moon and, uh, you know, kind of like how you used to be able to do the trick with philosophy in this game. Um, that game you can uh, propel yourself into uh, advanced uh, aviation, I think it is, something of that nature, and you get the uh, bombers uh, quite quick when you build the I think it's, I want to say the Oracle, something like that. You build that and you can, you know, propel yourself so far ahead to get those bombers and just destroy everybody. <laughs> he, way before, uh, it's a slingshot um, strategy. I don't know why I'm bringing that up. It has nothing to do with this game. I do apologize. Checking the, uh, how much gold I have, I think. Uh, what am I trying to, oh. Yeah, I want to buy that mountain. I'm not uh, planning on actually growing there anytime soon. I just want that city for that extra 10 
uh, gold per turn. Uh, my experience, whenever you do get this uh, wonder, uh, and you put a city close to it, and you, uh, <laughs> it seems like the AI knows it, and they come to take it. So it's a bit of a gamble because, um, you know, I'm not uh, putting any defense or anything in there. So the reason I didn't <coughs> start building a pyramid was because my plan is to use gold, especially now that that archer that I tried to kill but uh, didn't kill uh, sacked one of our uh, uh, luxury resources, marble, um, after we had just traded. Uh, so that's another exploitation. But this one I didn't really plan on or see it coming. But um, there have been games where, you know, I'm just like, <laughs> I have a lot of luxury resources and I'm just letting the barbarians <laughs> keep uh, destroy them as I repair them. And, you know, it's constantly like I'm just using that uh, to get uh, gold. It's, I just, I've done it before just to see, you know, how much you can get away with that. Because it, it, it's just kind of funny. <laughs> but, um, so anyway, we're going to uh, plan on, you know, repairing that pretty soon here. And uh, trading again and getting another 240 gold, which is kind of like a free pyramid. So, <coughs> so that's why building the monument instead of the pyramid. And plenty of barbs to destroy over there when, wouldn't uh, be so and we've researched calendar now because of course we have silk in the area and we're going to get that up and uh, try to sell it or use it um, you know eventually we're not going to sell any more resources because uh, happiness is going to become a, an issue <coughs> quite uh, quickly as we um, rapidly expand city after city and I, I tend to you know fall behind anyway I, I don't get it up as fast as I should you know like sometimes I think I should just be building settlers in all the cities and uh, so if you have three or let's say you have four cities and you build settlers in all four cities now you have eight cities right so <laughs> uh, it gets exponential uh, when you start doing that you got eight cities then you build eight more settlers bang you know you got all these cities um, so it's just like, uh, what is it, uh, a city span. <laughs> and uh, I'm here just thinking, like, oh, where should I go, you know, because my whole uh, technology plan um, is kind of uh, thwarted uh, because I'm so far away from everybody. Um, I really didn't want to build, like, you know, three cities and turtle and... Um, uh, just research and put research agreements all through the game and um, be so far ahead in science uh, that it's just silly and you know uh, they have no chance to destroy us at all so although I, uh, that plan for this map and this starting point um, uh, I have no uh, problem with anybody doing that because uh, obviously I think you could get easily get away with it uh, you know, build three, maybe four cities maximum, uh, go into uh, tradition, and get that culture, get that growth, you know, um, play nice with everybody, and, um, uh, and you know, go to the moon, <laughs> build the uh, space shuttle, and you're off, but, uh, you know, funny thing is, um, you, you're supposed to adapt to this game as you know the situation goes, but I really like went in to this game with the mindset that I am uh, I'm going to conquer uh, because that is where my game needs um, the most work is the that's probably my least um, uh, uh, skill set is uh, the militaristic domination game so <coughs> because you know it's just a headache um, uh, I think it takes more maintenance than uh, per se going tall and turtling and you know getting research agreements and 
going to the moon or getting the diplomatic victory um, which those are easier on smaller maps and and militaristic is probably easier on smaller maps as well and yeah definitely easier and um, well cultural is easier <laughs> uh, yeah no I I take that back I think uh, diplomatic and uh, uh, science victories are easier on these maps that's right yeah because you you're able to play nicer and um, you know you have enough uh, you have enough space to uh, play nice the whole game whereas in the smaller map you know they're right on top of you uh, or on the tiny small dual whatever um, they're they're on top of you and they are not um, you know thinking about being friends with you so you have to uh, constantly be at war with them However, it's easier to take take them out of the game in the early game. So, so uh, like I've said before, this game is dependent on the setup. Um, I don't think so much, although people disagree with the starting uh, position, you can have better or worse starting positions, but the setup is the main part of this game. This is what I was thinking, 3 gold, 88. Uh, I know I was shorting myself quite a bit there, so... I think it was 75, but I was thinking about taking all his gold so that he has to struggle a little bit. And But then I decided, well, let's go 145 and 3. <laughs> uh, or no, I, 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 let me check on him. Oh, okay, no. Okay, so I was like, uh, he didn't want any, Montezuma didn't want any uh, marbles. So he gave me 13, which the best is 20 and 7. So I got 13 and 7, shorting myself 7 or even more if I would have went with, uh, well, I couldn't go with Montezuma, so. I got the most that I could on that turn, I would say. <coughs> uh, so yeah, I, I built a settler. Now I'm going library because I'm an idiot. You know, it's not gonna really do much for me, but I know that eventually you're gonna have to put libraries in, you know, um, your cities. Now, sometimes, you know, when I'm playing militaristic, or I have a civilization that's closer to me, and I'm ICS, and at the same t same time I have like four or five cities, um, uh, I'll abandon uh, libraries altogether. Um, you know, because um, I, ha I have the religion and the messenger of the gods, and trying to use that as my science um, situation. So, uh, but yeah, you know. Probably looking back on this, it would probably be better to, you know, go small, a uh, little taller, um, grab the libraries, get the uh, National College, and go that route, which, you know, I kind of do that all the time anyway, so 